Hello, I am the Shy Explorer and my channel is all about introverted life in an extroverted world. The hot topic being travel and the ups and downs that have come with being out of my comfort zone for seven long months of travel. I've always felt like such a failure my whole life of finding socialising so, so difficult and this backpacking trip around Asia and Australia has been putting me to the ultimate test. Have I loved every second? No. I've been super emotional and drained sometimes. Even when you are seeing and doing life-changing things, it can be so overwhelming and I never ever see content about those difficulties and how hard it can be sometimes, especially from the angle of someone who is more shy and introverted. So this is me trying to show you how it's been for me and just in the hope that it helps someone else feel a little bit normal out there. I hope you like this tour of Thailand. So this journey for me began with a long drive to Heathrow Airport. I've actually never flown long distance before, so this 12 hour flight to Bangkok was about to be the longest I've ever done and I can definitely see why people might avoid long haul travel. So yeah, this airport was a bit magnificent to me. I really haven't been in one so grand before and I was really feeling emotional after saying goodbye to my family for what I thought would be a whole year of my life. Um, eventually I arrived into Bangkok and had to get another flight out to Phuket where I was expecting all the tropical beautiful pictures that you see online. Now, I was in a beautiful service department building and I slept for about three days. The travel really wore me out. The jet lag I suffered with was extreme. I really wasn't expecting that. I thought I'd just have a nice long sleep and bounce back, but that's not the case. And the hotel place that I was in had, you know, a lovely pool at the top of the place. And it is rainy season, so, you know, the clouds and stuff. I didn't see a great deal of sun. Eventually I got out to Patong, which is whereabouts I was in Phuket, and to be honest I was gravely disappointed. I spent 10 days in Phuket and I regret them the most of my entire trip. It was a very seedy place, all about, um, you know, just getting drunk, weed had just become legalised. The only thing to do was go to something called the Big Buddha, which is like a statue and I was expecting it to be a really cultural place. Um, my taxi driver told me it had only been around for 10 years, so I was pretty surprised by this. I got a few pictures, walked around it, and that was it. I mean, it cost me like over £30 in a taxi, even with trying to negotiate. And I was really unimpressed with it, to be honest. Um, there were some beautiful views from the top, don't get me wrong. I was so hot and bothered. You have to wear, of course, modest clothing. Um, there are signs everywhere that say, like you know, no bikinis, no this and that, basically just photos of women with crosses through them and yeah, it made me feel weird, I didn't like the vibe at all, um, I just liked the views from the top and that was it. I mistakenly booked a second Airbnb in Phuket before I even went to Thailand, expecting Phuket to be this amazing place. We should have just left because we didn't want to waste our money but it was crap. We had another Airbnb, significantly cheaper but, you know, fairly decent for another five nights and it rained the whole time not that I cared I didn't want to go out there was nothing good to do the beach was just rainy people bother you every five seconds trying to sell you something and I was really getting nervous now that I'd come to Thailand and I was already hating my trip I felt guilty for thinking these things um, and I got a bus to Krabi now Krabi was a totally different vibe the bus is strange though you just book on an app um, and it's just like some random man's van. I mean, there's plenty of other travellers doing it, but there's nothing so formal. And, you know, it can feel quite random. You have no idea when you're going to be stopping for the toilet. You have to prepare all that. If you have any dietary requirements, you know, you'll be at the 7-Eleven a lot. So hopefully you can find something in there. I got to this bus station and some random guy driving this school bus let us on the back. And here we are walking to our hotel. Now, I booked like a five-star hotel in Ao Nang in Krabi. It is such a beautiful place and when I arrived at this hotel all my worries and upsets about Thailand just totally disappeared. I was super impressed. I had a beautiful place with the balcony and the view of the mountains called the pavilions 
and they are a little bit of a chain it was just so luxury so gorgeous I had like the best week ever here I didn't do a great deal to be honest I was still really depressed at having left home and I just felt so out of sorts in Thailand I'd never even left Europe really so I didn't appreciate it as much and that is one of my regrets that I didn't rent a bike and really bike around Ao Nang and the area I still really nervous about getting on a bike um, I don't even have a driver's license my partner does so and I, I just thought it would be so dangerous but I was totally wrong I should have explored more on the bike I would have realised how freeing and great it was <laughs> But the hotel was great. I had some great days there, like just relaxing, eating food, just sitting by the pool. And I would walk to this vegan cafe at the end of the road every day. I'm vegan, so I'm always hunting for good vegan food. Thailand does have plenty of options, so you aren't going to struggle being a vegetarian or vegan. Definitely don't worry. And the sunsets were gorgeous. I just loved the golden hours. There were plenty of amazing photo opportunities. Ao Nang Beach, it was okay. It's just all the beaches in Thailand are like super thin strips. There's not like massive land, you know, to sit on like in Australia. Um, so that's always a bit disappointing, but there's lots of coffee bars along a million and one bikes. You know, I tried to sit there for a little bit, but you are going to get offered weed and um, selling things constantly. So that can be quite frustrating if you just don't enjoy talking to people like me. Luckily, I have a partner that will take on all the socialising with strangers um, as I absolutely despise it and it leaves me with a really bad feeling when people approach me. Um, and sellers can also come up and touch you as well and it can feel really intimidating. I had a beautiful Indian at Govinda's in Ao Nang for one of my last nights. Um, I didn't go out much in the evening and I don't drink alcohol very often at all. Um, I have you know, soft drinks. I went to Reeve, which is apparently has an amazing fire show. So I watched this beautiful fire show, which was really as a highlight and a, a great tourist attraction, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's a bit of a pricey bar if you're drinking cocktails and alcohol, but it's really well worth it. You feel like you've had a really good night afterwards and it started to help me feel like I wasn't completely wasting my time. I'm someone that doesn't love being out late. I like to be inside having an evening meal as a takeaway, um, getting an early night or just at least in bed in my comfort zone. I don't love being around drunk people, um, you know, it just makes me anxious to be honest because I don't want to be out of my head away from home or in a place where I don't feel, you know, 100% sure. So yeah, um, I enjoyed the fire show very much. I went back to the hotel on the courtesy car straight away, which was great. It's so hot and sticky at night though, it is hard to get used to. <laughs> Waking up in this room every day was fabulous though. You could have a nice lay in the tub, look at the beautiful view. Just so green and picturesque. I really couldn't recommend it enough. I always wake up at lunchtime. So spring rolls and chips for me. Um, and this night I got ready to go to Krabby Night Market. Some lovely people from the hotel asked if I wanted to share a taxi with them to go to it. I don't usually love making friends with people I've just met, but they were so kind, they were a bit older. Really kind and easy to talk to. I think they could sense I was a bit uneasy. Had like a, you know, banana roti, a few nice things, lots of tofu -y type things and noodles. You know, I just use Happy Cow, the app, to figure things out if I'm unsure. And I did have an alcoholic drink here. Um, it barely made me feel anything. I'm so lightweight, so um, I probably wasn't any alcohol in it anyway. I watched open mic here and it was really nice actually to see locals getting involved in the open mic um, and sing those random songs, country roads being the favourite. The sunset this night was so beautiful so I went and walked along the coastline to see this big crab statue that everybody was crowding around and it looked <laughs> kind of cool but the colours in the sky were what amazed me and I started to feel like the travelling wasn't a huge mistake, I was quite happy and content. And there's lots of cute stuff at the market as well, you know, mementos, things I could buy. And in this environment, I didn't mind talking to people about selling their wares, you know, it was totally normal. But Krabby was great. After a week in the hotel, I, it was time for me to then move on and start some island hopping. I get extremely seasick. My biggest anxiety about travel is sort of a metaphobia. I'm terrified of being ill, of vomiting mostly in strange places, so boat sick yeah I have to take a lot of pills to not feel ill I arrived in Koh Samui and stayed in this nice little hotel called Malibu I had like a nice little hut in a little bit of um, you know hotel zone it was really nice and private I did really like it um, although I will say that 
they do get lizards coming in the room, the geckos. Um, some people think they're lovely and funny and, you know, that's just normal. But I personally think that's really horrible that animals can just get in the room and chill there. And I think I just lost my nerve there. I was really kind of stressed that everyone was telling me to forget about them. It was across the road from the Plaza Shopping Centre, which was really nice. I had some cool shops in there, Starbucks, something like a bit normal that helped me. I had good Wi-Fi. Um, so I really enjoyed chilling in there. But the hotel also had really nice beach area and some like, you know, nice chairs and things and, and a nice little pool. So you could just chill there pretty much all day and, you know, not feel bad at all. But people will still try and sell you things and give you massages on the beach. One guy actually grabbed my ankle and tried to put a bracelet on me, which made me really, really upset and retreat to my room. Uh, Starbucks has a lot of stuff and, you know, different stuff as well. A few little vegan bits as well, really random like vegan crab sandwich um, and a banana muffin I had most days. <laughs> this is what I mean about the hotel. It has some beautiful furniture and photo opportunities. I'm someone that loves to get beautiful pictures of me and my experience abroad and, you know, that always made me happy no matter how I was feeling. Um, I also got a taxi to Lamai. These buses, they just drive along and you just hop on all the time. It's just people's random cars, but it's cheap and easy. And it was called The Door, this lovely bar on the beach. And I had like a nice coconut water drink, super luxury feeling and, you know, nice. But again, people will still try and come up to you and sell you when you're enjoying a nice private drink in a bar. It's really frustrating. Um, the weather kept going from really rainy to really sunny, um, so eventually I just gave up and went to find this vegan ice cream place I found on Happy Cow. Had a quick ice cream and back in the back of a taxi where they tried to massively overcharge us. The worst thing about Asia is having to barter. I hate bartering. It's really not English culture to talk loads and loads about money. I find it super stressful. <laughs> but here we are back in the hotel and it was torrential rain. I love the rain. I miss it a lot. And trust me, when you're in constant heat, you do just really miss the rain. You think you'll never say that, but you honestly will. Obviously, in England, it rains 200 days a year, so <laughs> I'm not unfamiliar with a bit of rain. Speaking of English culture, this pub was randomly down the street. It's just so random, this sort of like fake Tudor decor, but you know, cute. And I'm a bit really cute little fatty outside, looking gorgeous. And I had a pizza in bed, my favourite kind of way to finish an evening. Like I say, I love my evening meals inside so I can finish them at my own pace and I'm not in a place where I feel like I have to get drunk or talk to loads of people. The hotel also had these lovely kittens just hanging around, which was really, really sweet. Now to show you the absolute best place to go if you eat if you're vegan in Koh Samui. Just a really nice cheap buffet, super affordable. You can keep going up and getting what you want. It's just a casual little place run by a lovely woman. I went every day and had a nice big fat lunch or dinner. Sometimes I went twice a day, I won't lie to you. It was absolutely amazing and I'd recommend it for anyone, vegan or not. It's just brilliant and so cheap. Now this is my hotel at night. They do a great job at making it look really romantic and, and beautiful. And I just wanted to show you around because it is like a nice romantic spot. It wasn't very busy at this time of year, I suppose it was off season. So all this was free, like people were not using it and it's such a shame. I just wish I liked sitting out at night, but I'm nervous about the crabs and stuff on the sand, so I didn't feel comfortable. I just wanted to film some of the lights and like some of the beautiful little areas, like look at these little teepee huts. It's just lovely and you could get some really sweet pictures there. My family thought I was on like my honeymoon or something when I was sending photos of this place. Um, it would make a fabulous place for a honeymoon, to be honest. Um, I'd really recommend it, for sure. And the staff were super kind. Um, they always had drinks on hand, things like that. Always happy to help. Um, it's really hard to get on the beach in Koh Samui unless you're staying in a beachfront hotel. There's just no entrance from the street, so it was really nice to be able to just get on from the hotel without any worries. I could see people going past and paying our hotel to like use one of their beds for the night for the day sorry so yeah and you can see the lightning storm kicking up here yeah in rainy season this was most nights um very loud very thundery and scary uh, but no one seemed phased by it so i didn't get worried i woke up with the urge to go to the gym i was going to the gym so much back home and um, really working with a personal trainer and to feel like i was losing all that progress was really depressing to me and it's just something to do that like keeps you feeling good about yourself. 
Um, and then it was time to move on to my next island stop, Koh Panyam. And this was my absolute favourite place in the whole of Thailand. I stayed at this beautiful tree house, but I'm going to make a separate video reviewing this beautiful stay because I spent two whole weeks on Koh Panyam. And I did a lot of stuff and this section would have been much longer than the rest. So just to quickly show you what the treehouse looks like and to tune into the next video I upload to see it more up close because I think if you're looking for a really unique stay in Thailand, this would be perfect for you. And I'd love to just show you more about the island that you can do if you're not big into the drinking and drug culture, like I said. I did try and go out a few times at the night. I, when I say I didn't, I really, 90% of the time I don't bother, so I don't film it. But there's lots of little street side bars, um, not really my vibe at all, just sort of like people randomly come in to buy weed and just sit there and it's really not my interest. Lots of lizards again in the treehouse as you can imagine, which I hated with an absolute passion. But nearby, beautiful little restaurants, very touristy, yeah, but so what? There's lots of to eat and you know, it's easy if you have a dietary requirement, if you're vegan or if you're vegetarian, whatever. You know, lots of fruit bowls, nice coffees and smoothies. You just want to feel comfortable sometimes, like you're eating food that you can trust and that's healthy. It was a little bit more expensive than like a local food would be, that's for sure. Next door it has a Chana Masala, a beautiful Indian. Apparently the same owners and it was really, really nice. This was my favourite spot, probably in the whole of Thailand. I know it's Indian food, but there's a lot of that in Thailand and it was just gorgeous. They do beautiful like thali dishes, you know, where you can have a selection. Um, spinach, onion rings, um, poppadoms, oh, everything. It was lovely. And they even have some really nice, like, chai tea stuff. I just, I went most nights, to be honest. I just thought it was amazing. And I really miss this place. Koh Panyan was somewhere I would recommend to basically everyone. This is another night where I went out and tried to sort of explore some nightlife without too intensely going into it. The sun sets around sort of six o'clock and I went to the Amsterdam bar. As you can imagine, it's kind of full of people smoking and you can buy it there and everything. But there's also families there and young kids and people just go up this high to watch the sunset, which was really nice. It wasn't a brilliant sunset. There's me trying to show you the sunset. It was pretty crappy sunset with all the clouds, but still a really nice vibe. And when it gets dark, it gets a bit like loud and more vibey. So uh, I had like a soft little drink and went home for a nice cozy night in my tree house. Now they also have a night market which is really good for some cheap evening food. You could go every night, have something different and I've spent you know less than five pounds, five British pounds, sort of ten dollars kind of vibe. Even less if you wanted to you know try and barter and things like that and I went to this nice place to get some vegan food. They also have an Indian which had some options. You can always ask and they are quite understanding. Obviously it's quite a touristy place lots of cats and dogs roaming around this island. I touched a lot of them, I felt quite safe doing so. I'm a very animally person. Not everyone is, don't worry, they're not gonna like, they don't all run at you and approach you, so you don't need to like be too scared of them. It was time to leave the tree house. I had a bit of a nightmare now, checking into my next Airbnb. The hosts were quite unorganized and I had to go back and forth around the island. Um, they'd forgotten about us, you know, tried to help us pick us up. I went to this indigo place again. They have another branch in the town centre, so they have lots of little lovely desserts. You know, a vegan cookie and a nice latte, and I was really enjoying a bit of chocolate. The thing I miss about home is like the lovely chocolate. You'll understand if you're dairy free. It's so hard to find decent cake and chocolate in Asia. I see lots of stray dogs that I just love to touch. Now, this is not my Airbnb. This is where they put us for one single night, saying that our eco lodge was not ready for us. There was a lady in there struggling and she needed to be there. I understood, but I wish I'd not known this at the exact time I was checking in at 2 p.m. I wish I'd known this a bit sooner. Um, you know, I had to go back and forth all day and I felt, you know, like I'd lost a day of my life there, really. But I didn't honestly mind so much. Um, until the next day when I actually arrived at the place and you know they were less than nice um, but anyway this is where I actually booked Koalusha Eco Lodge um, the place is lovely and what they're doing with the place is nice at the time they were making it like a coffee shop they were really busy with that and I think it kind of distracted from being kind and helping the guests the guy checked us in and told us how cheap the place we'd booked was and I felt 
you know, really dismayed by that. I was really uncomfortable. I have a beautiful piece of land, um, lots of chairs. You can borrow a kayak and all this. But to be honest, I felt uncomfortable and I didn't want to ask them for anything. Um, I just sort of biked around the place and yeah, chilled. But they were nice and I left something behind and they did contact me about it. But I guess when you have so much going on, you forget to be bothered about the guests that you do have. Um, but yeah, they had a nice, pure, relaxed spa very close by. I went every day and got a foot massage. Foot massage is ideal for those that are scared to like obviously strip down for complete strangers. There's no modesty with the masseuses so I recommend a foot massage you only have to take shoes and socks off totally cheap and cheerful really nice way to spend an hour I always just read my book you can close your eyes and there was a beautiful sunset outside the 7-eleven which I thought I'd show you as I ride around on the back of a bike I felt so free and amazing riding around on the back of a bike I absolutely loved that feeling and that's when I really started to love Thailand because it just felt so amazing and I wish I'd been on a bike a lot sooner. <laughs> I could have actually got to decent places but, you know, I had to put that anxiety behind me and really work myself up to it. So I'm trying to forgive myself for wasting my own time like that. So the views inside my eco lodge were quite nice. You can see the ocean, lots of greenery, really beautiful. So many mosquitoes though. I've never been so bitten in my life. Um, the rain doesn't help with mosquitoes. It was really, really raining, as you can see, and <laughs> I got bitten to absolute shreds. So yeah, there's that. But it is what it is. I still had my tea bags, so I was enjoying lots of nice rainy cups of tea and reading my books in a nice quiet place. That's all I ask of a place. Just peaceful, quiet, not too rowdy, but also not too lonely. I did get soaked when I went out eventually in the rain <laughs> as you can see and there's some beautiful dogs around that I was always trying to make friends with didn't always work on our way biking to the paradise waterfalls here and uh, we had a little stop a little home home owned restaurant just a little cute thing in someone's front room and a little a lovely little handwritten menu I'll show you um I had some like tom yum soup kind of thing it's more of a local item and it wasn't my favorite to be honest um i like to be honest the amount of asian food i've had to eat in asia of course made me go off it a lot and i was always looking for like the crappy tourist food and i really hate that about myself but it's fortunately you just lose your taste for things you're not familiar with which is is really annoying but yeah we carried on driving to the waterfall it was quite an easy ride to be honest obviously we expected to have to climb some stairs which isn't fun in the heat but it was actually nice and tree covered. They do charge you to come into all these places. And I don't know who the hell it is charging you. I feel like it's just a local person just putting the money. Obviously, that's exactly what it is. But, oh well, it's their living and it's not much for tourists. So there it is. I didn't really want to go in and get my hair wet because I'm wearing extensions. And I'll be really depressed if they get wet. So I also don't love swimming in water there. I can't see the bottom and I don't know what's in there. Lots of other people having fun though, which I've tried to show you there. And the sun was not too hot, so it was actually a really lovely visit. And spoke to some young people travelling around and they were having a lot of fun. They recommended the PP Islands, which I did not go to. And I don't regret because I've seen some TikToks where it looks like Party Central. And that just gives me Ibiza 2010 flashbacks and anxiety. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed a little taste of Southern Thailand. It was really, really nice in areas some not so much i hope my honest approach helps you because i just want to tell people about the the negatives as well as the positives because traveling was such a massive decision for me i really upended my life and i can't pretend that everything's perfect but thank you for watching and good night